Hi everyone, trying out some new videos for class today. Thought I would do a little personal introduction to the topics, try to make the videos a little bit shorter, and let's see how this goes. So I read through the chapter on linear contrast, that's the orthogonal linear contrast for a one-factor ANOVA, and they're really, it's a really powerful technique, and you can totally do them very easily in R. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna take that textbook example using the data from, or the simulated data from Smith 1979. We're gonna pop it into R. We're gonna do those linear contrasts. All right, let's head, let's head over to R. Okay, we're in chapter 12, section four, looking at Smith 1979. This is the example research design. Your textbook uses to show an example of doing orthogonal linear contrasts. I'm going to assume you've read this, so I'm not going to go over this. It's a design with five different groups, and there are some research hypotheses that suggest different patterns about how the groups might be different. Now, if we scroll down to the contrast table, we can see some of those ideas represented here. So I'm just going to briefly talk about this and mention where we're headed. We're just going to jump over to R in a second, and we're going to do this whole example really quick in R to see how to implement orthogonal linear contrasts in R. So here we have our five groups. This first contrast, take a look, plus two, minus three, plus two, plus two, minus three. So just to quickly interpret this one, We've got group one, three, and four all being the same and plus two, and groups two and five being minus three. So this is a, a comparison where we're thinking groups one, three, and four are equal, and they are different from groups two and five, which are equal. We could look at the second contrast here. Um, we're not, we've zeroed out group two and five, so we're not comparing them, and we're saying groups three and four are the same, and they're different from group one. So this is a way of comparing group three and four together as the same thing versus group one. The third one is, is group three different from group four with all the other ones zeroed out. And the last one is group two different from group five. All right, if we skip to 12.9, we can see some example data for each of the five groups. And uh, the ANOVA you would get if you run the omnibus test. With these example numbers, we're seeing that there's a, a F value of 5.469. And what we want to know is not whether there's some differences everywhere, because this test is just telling us that there's some differences between the groups, but it doesn't tell us about the pattern of those differences. So with the orthogonal contrast, we can go in and test those different patterns that we just talked about. And if you go through section 12.9 in the textbook, you can see uh, examples of computing each of the contrasts until we get to the very end. And we have an ANOVA table with the overall ANOVA and all of the different contrasts here and all of their F values. So let's head over to R and do this example. Got it set up, we're gonna load the tibble library, the tidy R library, and the dplyr library. And then what I've done is I've already written it out how we can load this example data into R. And I did all of this by hand. So this first part it uses the triple function that allows me to, to just kind of write out that wide data table that we saw in the textbook. So my goal was to get the table right in to R just by typing it in by hand. And we know that R wants data in long form, so I use the pivot longer function from tidy R to take what I wrote, and if we just run that part, we can see that it's gonna turn it into a long data frame, which we'll use later on when we put it in the AOV function. Now a quick note, up to this point in the pipe, uh, if we were to look at Smith, you can see that we've defined an independent variable and a dependent variable. The IV is a character class. We're going to be using a factor class because these factor classes can uh, be assigned different contrasts, which we will use. So if we do that, let's just take a quick example. Take Smith underscore example dollar sign, select the IV. Now, if I just press enter now, we can see the levels here. If I wanted to see what kind of 
variable it is, I could do class and it's gonna say character. Now I wanna turn this into a factor. So we could use the factor function just like that. And it will make it into a factor. Now I want you to see that when you do this in R, it will automatically make the levels alphabetized. So the way, uh, if we look at the order in which I entered these across the columns when I wrote this in by hand, I said same different imagery photo placebo. Now that's not in alphabetical order, that's in the order of the table from the textbook. When I declare IV to be a factor, R reorders these things. So now group one, according to R, is the different group, and group two is the imagery group. To be consistent with the textbook, I wanna use the same order. So when I create the factor, I use the mutate function, I assign IV to be itself, but inside the factor function, which will convert it from a character to a factor, and I'm supplying the levels here in the same order that I wrote them down up there. And that's just going to be important later on. It's gonna mean that I know what group one is, and I'm not letting R's assumptions tell me what group one is. Okay, at this point, we've declared the data. We could run the ANOVA using the AOV function, and we could take a look at the summary table. We can see here that we have the same ANOVA table that we see in the textbook for the Omnibus ANOVA. Let's get on with the contrasts. Notice that there is something called the contrasts function. And when you have a factor, uh, and we made sure that our IV variable is a factor, you can usually tell it's a factor when it says levels at the bottom. If you really wanna double check, you could use the class function and it will say factor. And just like the factor has this new property of levels, it also has a contrast property. If you didn't know it was there, you might not ever see it. If you run the contrasts function and you supply the name of a factor, you can see what the default contrasts are. So here are the default contrasts for the IV factor. Now what I want to do is define my own contrasts. Here's the four contrasts that we're trying to reproduce from the textbook. Each of these, there's four of them, and each of them has five numbers, uh, setting up the contrast weight for each of the five groups, okay? So we could go over in R, and I've done it just by using C1, 2, 3, and 4 to refer to contrast 1, 2, 3, and 4, and I'm just making vectors with each of these numbers. So we've got two, negative three, two, two, negative three for the first one, two, zero, negative one, negative one, zero for the second one, and so on. So I'm gonna run these. So we've got four of them in our environment window. Now we can use the cbind function. And what this will do is we'll put all four of those vectors into a matrix uh, five with five rows and four columns. So let's go ahead and save that in a variable called my contrast. We'll make use of that a little bit later. Uh, how about right now? <laughs> so what we want to do now is replace the contrast property in our independent variable with the new set of contrasts that we just made. Remember, currently the default is right here, and I'm going to assign into this thing the name of the new contrasts, the name of the matrix for the new contrast. So if I run this line, I've done that. And if I wanted to now double check, for example, this will tell me what the current contrast matrix is for my independent variable. Since I just assigned a new one when I press enter, I should see a, the new one reflected in there. All right, the next thing that we do is run the ANOVA as we did before. So we've got the AOV function, the name of our dependent variable as a function of the name of our independent variable. Remember, these are just the names of the columns in the data frame, IV for the independent variable, DV for the dependent variable. And then we're listing the name of the data frame. 
and I've saved the results in a variable called aov.out. Okay, so at this point we've actually done everything. What remains is just learning the syntax for printing out the values of the different um, contrast results. So we're going to use, uh, so just like we would normally say, use summary here, and we can ask to look at the summary table for the ANOVA, we're gonna do something very similar. This looks a little messy, so let me walk you through it. We're gonna use summary.aov, this is a part of the general summary functions, um, but it allows us to use the split property to list out the different contrasts that we ran. So let me just run this for you. So you can see that um, we've got our full ANOVA and we've printed out each of the different contrasts. If we were to compare this to the textbook, we can see the results are the same, um, but we have to look kind of carefully here. The textbook recommends that you do not report the total mean squared uh, and the, or sorry, the mean squared between and the F value for the omnibus ANOVA. By default, R does report those values. So we want to check the four different contrast results and we can see the degrees of freedom are the same. Uh, sorry, the, the degrees of freedom are the same. The sums of squares are the same. The mean squared values are the same. And the F values are also the same. I just want to talk a little bit about what's going on in this declaration. It looks a little complicated. Remember, these. if you wrap this entire statement in parentheses, it will both assign the contents of this summary to a variable and print it out. So I wanted to do both of those things. If I take off those parentheses and uh, run that line, it doesn't print out the what I wanted to see. So maybe you want to do that, that's fine. But it will save all that stuff in this variable here called full summary. So I wanted to print and save. So that's why there's parentheses uh, around the whole thing. Now, what we're doing is we're putting in the results of our ANOVA model into summary.aov, and we're going to use the split function. So here's the split. And what it wants is a list. Let's see where that list is. There it is. Let's see if I can try to make this look a little better just to so we've got a inside of this list okay so this closes off the summary.aov this closes off this thing over here slightly easier to look at i'm not sure if this is making it easier or harder to look at how about bring this down here okay maybe this is the best i can do uh, we have a property of summary.aov is split. It wants a list object. And then inside of the list, we want to have the name of the independent variable in your ANOVA, that name of that column. And then inside of that, we have yet another list. All right, and inside of that list, what we have are ways to declare the names that will be printed in the summary table of each of the contrasts. So if you remember up here, we defined our new sets of contrasts as C1, 2, 3, and 4. Those are the names of the contrasts in that contrast matrix. And maybe you wanna print out different names. So when you finally run this line of code, what do you want this to say? What do you want that to say? Uh, there's different ways of declaring these things. I followed the textbook example, so I wanted uh, to write it down like this. For each of the contrasts, you get to say the name here. So you can use quotations and put whatever you want in here. Like, let's just, you know, 
whatever I want. I can do that if I want to, and then it will say whatever I want, but you probably don't want to say that in this case. So I'll go back to what I had before. All right. And yeah, I'm just giving it the name I want and telling it what contrast it is. And it, uh, this is the syntax we'll use to print out the individual contrast that we define with our contrast matrix. I've got two more things. First of all, if we use the Papa Jaw package, we can take the results of our contrast ANOVA table that we just made. Remember, we stored that in the variable full summary. We can take that and put it into the APA print function, which gives us that ANOVA table. We can take that and put it in the APA table function. And when we knit this whole document, what's going to happen is we can print out a nice, a nicer looking ANOVA table, just like this. Okay. The final thing, and maybe this will connect into the next section where we'll talk a little bit about using R to help our understanding, our conceptual understanding of what linear contrasts are doing. Remember that the full F value, we, we see this in the textbook, right here where it says the omnibus F is a mean. And the idea is that the F value that you get for the overall ANOVA 5.47 is the average of all of the F values you get for each of the different contrasts. And this will be true when you have orthogonal contrasts and when you have a full set of orthogonal contrasts. So we could just check to see if that is true. If you want to look at, um, I mean, we basically need to take 21.09, 0 0.62, 0.16, average all of those and see if they equal 5.47. Well, if I go into full summary, which is where I save the ANOVA table, it's a list, as we discussed last class, use the dollar sign. I can start looking at the F values, and here are all the different F values. 5.46875, that's the first one. And then it's got all the other ones. So I'm just taking the first one, that's that 5.47. This is a way of extracting them. And then I want the second, third, fourth, and fifth one. So I'm saying two to five here. And uh, let's take out, so that'll be, let's just grab those numbers. There they are. And if we take the mean of these numbers, you can get four point, the same value. So we can see here just quickly that the overall F value is the same as the average of the F values from the orthogonal contrasts. All right, that's it for this section. Let's, uh, I'll have to think about what the next section will be and make another video for it. See you in a bit.